What's up guys, this is Miss Peer Editor, and today I'm going to be showing you definitions and concrete examples of literary devices that every reader should know. This video is going to be really helpful, especially if you're taking the AP Lit or AP Lang exams, or if you are just seeking to analyze a piece of text. So let's get started. These next few devices are examples of figurative language, which allow authors to play around with their words, really have some fun with the text, and I'm sure that you will recognize a few of these devices. The first example is a metaphor, which compares multiple situations, objects, or entities without using the words like or as. So for example, this line is a metaphor. All the, wor all the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players by Shakespeare, a very famous uh, quote from the play As You Like It. And in this metaphor, we can see that Shakespeare is comparing the world to a stage and men and women to players or actors. And notice how Shakespeare does not use the words like or as anywhere in these two, t these two lines. So the opposite of a metaphor would be a simile, which does compare multiple things using the words like or as. So for example, that memory blinked like a distant fog light in a stormy sea. We can hear, see here that in this piece of text from The Color of Water, that a memory is distinctly being compared to a distant fog light because we can see that the author has included the word like, which pretty much highlights that comparison really clearly. Another example of figurative language is personification, which gives human attributes to inanimate objects. Here's an example. The sun was gone, but he had left his footprints in the sky. And this is an awesome quote from Their Eyes Were Watching God, and it's also a really good example of imagery, which I'll be explaining later on. And you'll find out when analyzing text that personification and imagery often go hand in hand. And next is a hyperbole, or an over-exaggeration. And hyperboles pretty much transcend the limits of reality. They're so unrealistic that they're often humorous. So for example, the phrase, I'm so hungry I could eat a horse, is a hyperbole. A mixed metaphor is two or more metaphors that are illogical when combined. So for example, saying, we'll burn that bridge when we get there, is a mixed metaphor because you're combining two distinct expressions. One is saying, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. So pretty much saying, you know, we'll, once we get to a specific issue, we'll resolve it then. And also combining that phrase with the idea of burning bridges or severing those connections. And both of those two, both of those two distinct turns of a phrase are combined into one single expression here, and it has a pretty humorous effect, and you'll see that that's pretty common in mixed metaphors. Next is metonymy, which is substituting a phrase with another phrase that is closely related. It's kind of hard to understand this device without seeing it in practice, so here's an example from The Crown a quote from Queen Mary in this awesome Netflix uh, show. And she says, the fact is the crown must win, must always win. So here you can see that the crown is an example of a metonymy because the crown doesn't actually mean a physical crown. It represents the English monarchy, the, um, the queen's position of power. So we're using this phrase to represent something else. And just like you would use the phrase the Oval Office to represent the presidency, the U.S. presidency, that would be another example of metonymy. Next is synecdoche, which is a more specific example of metonymy, and it allows us to substitute a part of an object for the whole, or vice versa. So for example, saying boots on the ground is an example of this because the boot actually represents a part, a part of a larger whole, which is a soldier or a military force. So boots don't actually, you know, mean literal boots. They mean they are meant to represent a larger whole. Next is symbolism, which uses an object to represent an abstract idea or concept beyond the object's literal meaning. An awesome example of this is the beating heart in Edgar Allan Poe's the Telltale Heart, a short story, which represents the narrator's guilt. So imagery if you read is that. a vivid description that appeals to the five senses. 
So we can see imagery in the poem I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud by William Wordsworth. And here the reader can really visualize the golden daffodils that the speaker is describing because Wordsworth writes, A host of golden daffodils beside the lake beneath the trees fluttering and dancing in the breeze. So imagery is prevalent throughout this poem, which I actually analyzed in a separate video. I'll put the link to that in the description box below. And I suggest you check it out because this poem not only has examples of imagery, but a ton of other literary devices which are explained throughout this video. Next is analogy, which explains a situation, object, or idea by comparing it to a different situation that is more familiar to us. So it's really easy to get confused between an analogy and a simile or a metaphor, but it's important to point out that an analogy is specifically meant for explanation or clarification purposes. A really famous example of this is in Romeo and Juliet, when Juliet says, What's in a name? That which we call a rose by any other word would smell as sweet, so Romeo would, were he not Romeo called, retain that dear perfection which he owes without that title. So this is a mouthful, but basically she's saying, you know, if we were to call a rose some other name, it would still smell the same. And if we were to call Romeo something else, he, would, he wouldn't lose any of his essence or his personality. So she's drawing a comparison between two separate situations to make it clear to Romeo that, you know, a name is just, a, is just an empty label and it doesn't necessarily represent the essence or the innate quality of who you are. Next is connotation, which is the suggested or implied meaning of a word or phrase. So a word can have a positive, negative, or neutral connotation. And a denotation is the dictionary definition of a word. For irony, there are three different types. And the first type is verbal irony, which is when the speaker says something but actually means the opposite. So an example would be saying, it would be my pleasure to do something when you actually really don't want to do it. And here's an example from Pride and Prejudice, the 2005 movie based on Jane Austen's novel. I love this movie, but I also like the 1995 version. But in the movie, Mr. Darcy says, do you always talk as a rule while dancing? And Elizabeth Bennet replies, no, no, I prefer to be unsociable and taciturn. Makes it all so much more enjoyable, don't you think? And you can see here that she really has a sarcastic tone, um, and it really comes across in the movie. And she's pretty much, this is an example of verbal irony because she means the opposite of what she's saying. She doesn't actually like to be unsociable and taciturn, but she's poking fun at Mr. Darcy because she knows that he is actually that way. Next is dramatic irony, which is when the audience knows something that the characters don't. So for example, in Romeo and Juliet, Romeo thinks that Juliet is dead, even though the audience knows that she's actually asleep because she took a sleeping potion to fake her own death. Next is situational irony, the third type, which is when the actual outcome is the opposite of what is expected. So, for example, in O. Henry's short story, The Ransom of Red Chief, two men who kidnap a boy for ransom end up paying the boy's father to rid themselves of the boy. So this is situational irony because you would expect the father to have to pay ransom to the kidnappers, but instead the kidnappers end up paying the father because they are so annoyed by this bo this insufferable boy that they actually want to pay to get them to get rid of the boy altogether. Thanks for watching, stay tuned for part 2 of this video, and if you like this tutorial, give it a thumbs up, subscribe and tap the bell to receive notifications whenever I make a new video. Also comment down below with any questions you have or any literary devices that you'd like to identify, I'd love to help you out.